everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video, and today I wanted to try something different, something I haven't done before on the channel. I've had it requested multiple times, and I thought it would be fun to do, and that is review custom Hearthstone cards. There's a very vibrant community of people out there that like to make custom cards, share it. Um, we're going to take it from the custom Hearthstone subreddit, and yeah... I just thought it would be a lot of fun to go over. I mean, take a look at different ideas for cards. A lot of these cards have ended up being basically implemented in the game. Or the idea is very similar to something implemented in the game. So that's kind of cool to see like what might possibly happen. But anyways, I also wanted to make this a potential uh, recurring segment. Where not only do we review like cards off of the custom Hearthstone subreddit. But you guys can just submit directly to me your custom cards or custom cards that you just want me to take a look at. So if you follow me over at Twitter, um, Zitty Hearthstone over at Twitter, um, I'll have the link in the description below. It's on the screen as well right now. And you just tweet at me with cut hashtag Zeddy Custom and include a picture of the card that you want me to review. Maybe we will take a look at it on a future episode. So yeah, follow me over there at Twitter, tweet at me, share your, uh, your pictures, put that hashtag in there. And maybe we'll review your custom card on the channel in a future episode. As long as it takes off. As long as it's something you guys want to see. And if it's not, well, you know, we'll figure something else out. But anyways, let's take a look at 10 cards that I grabbed from the Hearthstone subreddit. So we'll be rating the cards on two metrics. Uh, first will be, like, the design. Talk about, like, the flavor of it. You know, just in general, like... Is it a cool, interesting card? What it does? All that kind of stuff. And then I'll also just rate it kind of like on a balance type of perspective. Like, is it overpowered, underpowered? Would it see play? Would it be busted? All that kind of stuff. So let's take a look at the 10 cards and yeah, let's let's hop right in. So from Sparked, the Sparked, we have Regis or Regis, uh, 5 mana, 5, 7, Mage Elemental. And it has a, a constant effect of both heroes are frozen. So, I mean, this legendary seems to fit pretty well with the whole flavor of mage freezing things. And you actually have self-inflicted freezing, which, I mean, typically in mage it won't be too relevant if you're frozen. Unless you're playing in wild with, like, medieval and you want to attack with Atiesh. But overall, it's kind of like a cool tech to, like, you know, freeze a demon hunter, freeze a bomb warrior. And it's... Quite a heavily statted minion, 5 mana, 5, 7. I guess it's overstatted because there's kind of a downside that you're frozen, but not really. Um, Design-wise, I'd say it's pretty solid, like 4 four stars out of 5. Pretty cool flavor, interesting. In terms of power level, probably a little too powerful. Like, 5 mana, 5, 7 in stats, the, the downside is freezing your own face. Just doesn't really seem like much of a downside for a mage. And yeah, it's an elemental, good stats, kind of an insane upside. Probably a little too overpowered, so probably give it like a two out of five on the, the on the balance level, but pretty cool card and definitely interesting flavor. Next we have Target Practice a Rogue spell. This is from Kinetog, and it's uh yeah, it's a two-minute spell that you choose a target and then you deal six damage randomly split amongst all other enemies, so this seems a little bit insane. You tar so you can pick any enemy, whether it be the hero or the minions. And then, yeah, deal six damage randomly. So, if you have multiple minions, it's spread out a bunch. All of them, it might not do a lot, but, you know, there's no enemy. You're just dealing two damage. It's a two-mana fireball to the face. And it can be just incredible, like, AoE. Like, on a, like a cheap board. Like, there's three health on the board. You're just gonna kill everything. To me, this doesn't feel super flavorful with Rogue. They're not really about dealing random damage. We haven't seen that too much. Um, I don't get rogue vibes from this card. It reminds me a lot more of like a mage card or a warlock card, something like that. So probably give it like a, a two out of five on that regard. And then if you're looking at balance, I think this card's just kind of busted. <laughs> two minute deal six and you can be, it can be flexible to deal with a board and also push face damage. So probably, a a two on the balance side as well, but it's a cool card for sure. I just don't know if this really belongs in Rogue. Next we have a Subconscious Feline submitted by Rurn HDZ12. It's a three mana two three beast for mage and has a battle cry of put a random mage secret into play. You can't see what it is. So for once, the random is random to you as well. It's kind of interesting that you get basically any mage secret, you don't know what it is, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would really be a benefit. This is a 3 minute 2-3, two, two, so the stats kind of suck, but it's very mage, it's random, it plays into cheating out secrets and 
all the likes. So on a design level for Mage, I actually would probably give it like a 5. It does a lot of what Mage likes to do. Like I said, random, cheating secrets, all that. But from like a, a balance perspective, this card seems really bad. Uh, bad stats and the average ran, uh, average random mage secret just isn't very good. There's a lot of bad ones, especially if you're looking at wild where you got like effigy frozen clone, like, and you don't know what it is, so you don't really know <laughs> how to set things up. But it's a really interesting, cool card. Uh, I'll give it like uh, I'll give it a two on the the design or the balance part, but yeah, just don't think it would really see any play. But it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. Next, we have a neutral legendary minion submitted by Quack. Quack, and it's uh, called Razel the Painter. It's a four mana, four, five. And Battle Cry, you sketch the top card of your deck. You can finish drawing it later. And basically, what happens is you add the shifting sketch into your hand, and it will tell you, it'll let you draw the top card of your deck. So it costs some mana, and it tells you what it is. So in this example, it's Millhouse. You're playing Millhouse in your deck. But yeah, it could be anything. So this is like a version of Scree from um from like magic we've seen it in with like sphere of sapience in the most recent expansion and i think it's a really really cool card like this is one of my favorite that i've seen so far where you can influence your draw you can hard like oh shoot i really want that card now i'll use my sketch and draw it. I, just, I think it's really really cool really flavorful and any class can run it which is pretty neat and there's even like spell synergy. You can do stuff with like Apprentice and Auctioneer and who knows what. So I'm actually going to give it a five on the uh, the design style. I just think it's a really, really cool card. And balance wise, I don't think it's particularly OP. It's a four mana, four five. So you got a Yeti and you have to pay a mana to draw the card after. And you get some, you know, some feedback on it or some insight on it. I, I think that's really good. So does uh, balance wise, I think it would see play. I think it would be strong, but not broken in any way. So I'm going to give this a five on both levels. I just think it's a really cool card. I actually really like it and it looks pretty sweet. Next we have, this is tagged humorous, but I did think it was pretty cool. So I'm going to include it. Uh, it's Sir Phil Anthropist. Anthropist? I don't know. There's probably like some fun I'm missing. But anyways, it's submitted by we Weo Weo V. And it's a seven mana seven seven legendary mini neutral legendary battle cry. If your deck has only legendary cards, swap decks with your opponent so you can make your terrible all legendary deck the actual win condition by making your opponent have the terrible all legendary deck unfortunately you have to get to the point where you're playing a seven minute seven seven do nothing and you're probably dead but i think it's hilarious i think it's really funny because one of the big memes of these 35 legendary decks or 30 legendary decks is you can't possibly win with them because random legendary sucks so you play this they get a random legendary they get your deck, they're, they're screwed. They can't win, but they probably already won the game a long time ago before you can ever play this. So, uh, design wise, I'll give it a four. I think the beam is super sweet. Uh, balance wise, it's a one because you're never ever going to play this. It's really bad, uh, unplayable trash, but it's super, super funny. And I just thought I would include that here. Next, we have a card submitted by DDDDC60229. I wonder if that's his real biological name. Anyways, it's a warrior card. It's a 2 minute 3 2 mech, so premium stats. It's overkill. Equip a 3 2 fiery war axe. So, hey, we can get war axe again, but to get it, you have to overkill. So, overkill, if you're not aware, is an old keyword that basically you have to kill something over 1 HP with this. So if it has 2 health and it does 3 damage, you overkill, you get the weapon. So, I mean, typically you would play this and it'll probably get removed. Everyone has efficient removal and you probably don't get the War Axe, but give it like a rush. It's a mech in wild with like Skater Bot or something. Then it's like a 4 mana combo. It's terrible. Um, I think it's pretty flavorful in Warrior. You have the, you know, you have the mech stuff. They've done it with like Dr. Boom, Mad Genius, um, all that stuff and... You know, War Axe, obviously, pretty iconic uh, warrior card. And Overkill has been a keyword used in Warrior before. So I think design or flavor-wise, design-wise, flavor-wise, all that, I give it a four. It's pretty pretty on the mark. But balance-wise, I think it's too awkward. This card is basically going to be a Bloodfin Raptor most of the time. But, you know, you never know. Maybe a 2-mana 3-2 is just good enough. And if you get the War Axe, it is insane. But I'll give it a three on the balance scale just because, well... I think it would see some play. It might pick up, be a really good arena card. And yeah, if you, you pull it off, it's pretty insane. So pretty cool card, must say. Next, we have a Paladin Secret submitted by Barry the NPC. And this is called Lawsuit. And he's trying to make a Paladin Secret work. How's that going to be? They're usually terrible. So we have a secret. And when a friendly mini dies, add two coins to your hand. So 
One mana, gain two coins. That seems like a really good deal. Um, I don't think this fits in with Paladin flavor, like, at all. Coins have never really been a Paladin thing that I can recall. Other than, like, you know, you try and make OTK Paladin work, like, by getting coins with license. But that's never really been the design choice of Paladin. And I don't know, it just doesn't feel very, very flavorful on Paladin. But the whole friendly minion dying part does. The sacrificing of a minion, like you have redemption and things like that. Oh, I'll give I'll give it a three on the on the design perspective. I think it's kind of neat. I think it's kind of got a little bit of flavor. Uh, from balance wise, it seems kind of busted. <laughs> Getting two coins for one mana, being able to cheat mana is incredibly powerful. And putting this in the wild like quest deck, like or not quest deck, but the uh, the Uther deck would be insane with Beardo. You just get your you get the coins like nothing. That'd be pretty crazy. Um, but, you know, it's a powerful secret. It would probably see play, and that just doesn't happen, like, at all. We've seen, like, Avenge and Competitive Spirit basically see play and the, uh, the, the health buffer secret. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'll actually give it a four on the balance perspective because I think in order to make a Paladin secret, it needs to be powerful. And, you know, one mana gain two coins is pretty powerful, but doesn't seem too busted, but pro probably is. It probably is. But I'll give it a four. Pretty cool card. And I definitely think getting one mana get two coins, because you're always going to have a minion die. That's always going to happen. It's going to be pretty damn effective. Next, we have another rogue spell. This one's submitted by nobody. And it is a six mana spell called No Witnesses. It destroys a minion and you silence its neighbor. So this can kill one big threat and then silence some other stuff. Uh, feels pretty rogue to me, the whole destroying a minion, whether it's like assassinate, ball spine, walk the plank, a lot of that stuff. Uh, silence has not traditionally been much of a rogue effect. Um, you have, like, sap and things like that, but never really a silence. So, this would, like, shore up a kind of a weakness rogue has. And I don't know if that's something that really makes sense design-wise for rogue. But destroying a minion, silencing neighbors, that really... I love cards that, like, reward positioning from either yourself or your opponent. And it'd be a card that, if it's powerful, your opponent would have to consider how they position their minions, whether they want it to get... If it's going to get destroyed, well, do I want my stuff on the side getting silenced, things like that. So I think it's a pretty cool card in that regard. But design-wise, I don't know if we really want to be putting silence into Rogue. So I'll give it a three on that on that side. But in terms of balance, um, it's pretty expensive. Six mana destroy a minion, not great. The silence oftentimes is probably be pretty useless depending on the matchup like you silencing just garbage aggro minions who cares but you know against like a pure paladin could be ridiculous so uh balance wise i'll give it a three as well um could see a bit of play it doesn't seem too overpowered but definitely would pop up here and there next we have a shaman minion submitted by quack again this guy's a busy guy uh submitting a card called totem pole climber it's a three mana three three minion and it has battle cry gain the effects of all the totems you control so if you have, as you can see in the graphic here, if you have all four totems up, he would be able to heal your other minions for one, gain spell damage plus one. He would gain plus one plus one, the stats on this on the Searing Totem, and gain taunt. So at, at, at its peak, it would be a three mana four four with taunt, spell damage plus one, and heal your other minions. This is a really cool card. I actually think this is really flavorful, really very kind of well-designed for shaman like it's a three mana three three with some upside so yeah i mean on average you might have like one or two totems maybe and you'll get a little bit of a boost it's not a totem itself so you don't have to um you know worry about it breaking the game that way and yeah i just think it's really good really cool design i'll actually give it a five on that level i just it feels this feels like a card that realistically could come out i just think it's really cool and then in terms of balance again i think it's pretty balanced like the peak upside of it isn't that insane like okay say you somehow at every totem on the board which you don't even really want in most cases it's still not completely busted it's a really strong minion but you had all four totems survived it's worth that upside it's you know it, that's pretty cool so balance wise i'd probably give it a four i just don't think it'd be that strong a card i don't think this would actually see play because well you need totems to live and be around and totems suck almost all the time and i don't think this really puts it over the top in that totem shaman archetype but yeah just give it a, i'll give it a four in terms of balance and a five for design and flavor just really really cool card next we have another card from kukwak this guy is all over the place and it's called dr frankenfin it's another shaman card i guess he likes shaman it's a legendary minion it's a three mana three four and it has a battle cry if you've overloaded and control murloc 
transform it into Frankenfin's Amalgam. And the Amalgam is a 4 mana 4-4 four four with charge. And it has all. It's an all tribe. So it could die to like every crab in the game. So yeah, I mean, it's a premium statted legendary minion with some upside. And I can tell you this much. Every single Murloc deck in Wild and Standard would run this guy. Turning any Murloc into a 4-4 four four charger is insane. And yeah, design-wise, it feels kind of flavorful. It seems Mur it seems kind of murloc but it's not a Murloc. He's not a Murloc himself, which is kind of weird. It seems like he should be a Murloc. And I guess he does make an amalgam, so it makes sense that it's like every single tribe. But I think it's pretty cool design, pretty flavorful. Um, very shaman, transforming minions, especially like doing stuff with Murlocs. Just feels right. I'll give it a four in terms of design and flavor. I think it's really cool. Balance-wise, I think it's a little uh, broken, a little over the top. Like, you're getting upside on insane upside. You're turning, like, a 1-1 one, one Murloc into a 4-4 four, four Charger. That goes face. And if you have, like, Murloc War Leader on the board, it's a lot of damage for pretty cheap. So, balance-wise, probably gonna go on the lower end. Something like a 2 out of 5. It's pretty freaking strong. Not completely busted, but pretty ridiculous, to say the least. Lastly, we have a neutral legendary, Sethos the Burrower, submitted by Wewo Wewo V. It's a 7-mana 4-7 beast. That's Rush in Wind Fury and Battlecry Summon a Sand Tunnel. This can attack it to go dormant for a turn. And the Sand Tunnel, as you see, uh, it says if Sethos attacks this, it goes dormant for a turn. Destroy this if Sethos leaves the battlefield. So, basically, this card seems a little bit out there. It's a little bit convoluted, but their Sand Tunnel is summoned on the board. If Sethos attack it, attacks the Sand Tunnel, Sethos itself will go dormant for a turn. And then you can kind of protect it. So because it has Rush Wind Fury, when it hits the board, you can immediately hit something and then hit the Sand Tunnel, go dormant, and keep repeating that. But if Sethos does manage to get destroyed or removed, then the Sand Tunnel disappears. So hopefully I understand that. Hopefully you understand what I mean by that. And basically, it allows you to kind of manipulate the dormant mechanic, allow you to continuously get dormant value. You could probably find ways of going infinite with this where you basically never lose the minion. But, you know, it's kind of clunky. It's kind of awkward. And I believe the Sand Tunnel, the author in the comments said that it would summon on your side. It would be a unique interaction that way. But overall design, design flavor-wise, this thing seems like kind of just a mess. I get what he's going for. It's kind of cool to, like, you know, go hide into the tunnel, right? He's attacking and hiding into the tunnel, going dormant. It's kind of neat, but it's a little too convoluted. I think it'd be a little too confusing for most players. I had to read this one a couple times. Maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. But yeah, it's kind of one of those over-the-top, really imaginative cool cards. But in terms of design and flavor and execution and for actual real players, I think it'd probably be a little out there. So I'll give it a 2 out of 5. I think it's a really interesting design for sure and really cool. But yeah, I don't think it would really work in the game so well. And in terms of balance, it seems broken. Like there's ways to manipulate and break this. Something where you can influence by making a sand tunnel that your opponent can't really interact with and... You can't interact with a dormant minion. I just, it, and it has wind fury. It just, that seems terrifying. And you could give this charge with like Tundra Rhino and Hunter. So yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a one on the balance scale. I think this thing would just be absolutely broken. So that's it. That's my review of all these custom cards from the last month that I looked at. They were the top rated ones. And yeah, again, check out my Twitter, uh, submit custom cards to me and let me know in the comments below. Um, do you like how I'm reviewing these cards? Is there a better way we can do it? I have never reviewed a custom card before, nor have I really watched custom card reviews. I'm just kind of winging it here, but I thought it would be kind of a fun way to do it. And again, yeah, let me, all feedback is really appreciated. And if you guys enjoy the video, please let me know as well. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. Stay salty, my friends. <music>